two, one. Ooh, dude, I don't know how much to put in here. I'm making stew. Okay, I have gray pigment in here. You know what? There, a little more. I have gray pigment and I'm accenting a, I'll say like a bit of red. Is it a little bit, a lot? I don't know. Either the gray will eat it, eat it up nice and just won't ever get a hint of red. Which, holy crap, that looks like. Did I just put all that red in there and it's not even turning? Oh yeah, we're getting a little bit. Not as much as I thought though. Okay, well I didn't want it to be like crazy red right off the bat, so. Some colors really throw the color palette off way quicker than other colors, so. Um, Laura said, hey, hey. Laura, you're back. Dude, she, Jeanette too? Yeah. How are these two people such badasses every day? Every day. Okay, we're getting a little sandstone gray in there. You know what? I know how. Don't worry, Uncle Levi knows how to fix things. Well, I don't know how to fix things, but you know what? I know how to either break them further or fix them. What does a little gray, gray and red. a little red and a little blue, what's, what's red and blue make? That's purple. Purple, yeah, we just made purple. Oh, uh, Jeanette said I've been doing background checks all day. Good job, Jeanette. Okay, I think we'll salvage this. I'm going for like a weird, dirty slate color, so. Oh yeah. Was that what I was initially going for? Let's be honest. No, it was not. What started you wanting to do epoxy? How long have you been doing it? You know, epoxy, I actually started out doing granite countertops, and that was kind of a passion of mine that I really loved. Um, but I noticed the market was getting pretty tight. It was very competitive. There's a lot of cheap products out there um, coming into the market and just very competitive. Not a lot of profit margin unless you had a huge shop. And I couldn't afford a huge shop, shop and setup, and um, and it was crazy. I had all these tools and guys. I mean, I, I had 37 employees running tile and granite, and it was all very heavy, hard to work with. You had breakage. Um, it just it's just kind of a world of its own. And we got into concrete, concrete overlay. Um, and when I started doing epoxy, I started mixing some colors in with my resin. I mean, it wasn't that easy. It took me years and talking to chemists and different people. And I started pouring countertops that had actual just color mixed right into the epoxy. And man, people got so mad at me in the industry. I didn't realize that at the time it was all these concrete guys and granite guys that were losing their profit margin because epoxy, we could do the same beautiful, super decorative countertop for, um, you know, much less money. We still had a good profit margin in it. So um, get the customers any looks they wanted. So. Um, I don't know, the rest is history. So I've been doing this for about 14 years now. And it's kind of one of my passions is to train people on you know, kind of just how to operate an actual small business that can be very profitable where you're not giving all your money to, to a stone yard or, you know. This is not the worst. I'm not, I'm not dead set against this. This is going to be pretty. So I'm going to somewhat do a dirty pour, guys, but we're running this kind of thin. We're going to be doing kind of the, a lot of times I, I'm in here and I pour just so much product that a lot of you guys are like, well, we wouldn't pour that much because we don't own the epoxy company. And so I like to pour realistic pours. So we have just a barely two gallons, which is like right at what we should have for coverage here. And we mixed an additional, say, three quarts and separated that out a little less than three quarts, about two and a half quarts, and separated that out into some containers with some other colors. And we're just going to dirty pour those and 
kind of blend them in and whatnot. So I am working my perimeter first. Thank you guys for joining here today. This countertop, I promise this countertop will look much more beautiful here in a minute as we start getting it a little further along here. What's your guys' favorite Christian song? I like Brandon Heath, Give Me a Rise. There's a random. What's that? I think that's my niece's favorite song. Oh, really? That's a, such a good song. Used to make fun of my buddy that would listen to Christian music. Now I do. Now he listens to like death metal and I'm always like, Chad, you gotta, you gotta listen to better music. And he's like, bro, I used to. KT tape? Um, I was... I, I had an injury where I tore my bicep off um, and it was had to get surgically reattached back at what two and a half three years ago so so I'm kind of gimpy and I was trying to work out like a little lady and doing something and I think I've been kind of tearing or hurting my bicep a little bit so I need to be a, probably just a little bit careful with it and sometimes on jobs I mean we'll unload 25 you know pretty heavy buckets and load them again and load sandbags and so. I don't know, just being a pansy, and the, my pansy tape helps me feel better about myself, so. It really does protect your muscle quite a bit. It's funny, if you ever have a nagging injury, from like a muscle tear or something, you'll be surprised at the support KT tape can give you. No. Say what? Three oh, that's a good song, Three Wooden Crosses, I like that. Dude, I'm, I'm a big fan of Alan, ja Alan Jackson. That is a, he sings a lot of... It does What's that? It does work. KT tape? Yes, it does, Jeanette. Three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway. Man, that song makes you think. I think all of us are going to, if we get to heaven, we're going to hear a lot of stories of things we didn't know how blessed we were. Meat? Yeah, what were you gonna ask? Hell yeah. Yes? Uh-huh. Oh. Do you know what a lot of new meat you got to actually kind of watch out, and this is crazy and kind of creepy, is lab-grown. Make sure you're not eating any lab-grown meat. Have you seen what, anybody out there seen the lab-grown meat yet? How do you grow lab-grown meat? What kind of cell grows, and what kind of cell grows the fastest for these companies that are doing lab-grown meat? This, I probably shouldn't say this. It'll get me canceled, but it's cancer cells. You can look this up. It's not a secret. They said a cancer cell was the fastest growing cell and what they decided to replicate most of the lab ground meat with. So I hear. So I'm not an expert in this, but I can't imagine anything getting grown in the lab being as healthy as what grows on a cow's ass. I don't know that that's why. That's a weird thing. I'd like to help. I've never heard of that actually to stay red too. And, and you like couldn't get it to, to like to look well done or medium or anything. Okay, that's weird. They do put like now a lot of dyes and stuff in it. So fish and stuff, like a lot of salmon. It's like they actually even feed the salmon, I believe, like colored pellets so the meat will turn red. So sorry guys, I know I shouldn't be saying that. I'm probably making everybody mad. But it, it's so disappointing. I always thought salmon was so healthy and then recently I'm watching Joe Rogan, which I mean, don't, I mean, I'm not, this is, I'm not say, stating this as facts, but they did say that farm-raised salmon is one of the most highly toxin-laden foods you can intake or ingest, so, which is kind of sad because it's sold as one of the healthiest foods you could eat. All right. Yep, I've seen that. Stay in Florida? And stay informed. That's right. They, you know, that's the biggest thing, is a lot of people just say no to stuff because they don't want to know. 
you know, they don't want to know the truth. And I mean, the truth might not be the funnest thing, but doesn't mean you doesn't mean you don't have a need to be informed. Okay, dirty poor. Here we go. Got to have my first actual talk with the investigators today, like formal, where I got to sit down and they asked me all their questions about the pond, so that was kind of nice. So we'll see. Seems like a... You don't need a respirator when spreading that? No, this actually, this product here is zero, truly zero VOC, but thank you for, that's a very good question. And a lot of resins say zero VOC, but because they lie about the chemicals they put in it, you still have a bad odor. So make sure you really check the product you're working with. Um, and if it says, please use a respirator, wear a respirator, because usually what's happening is they can sell it as zero VOC, but they can also still put up to 3% what trifunctional amines, isobenzoyl alcohol, and nonphenol. And those are chemicals to help, yeah, just make a cheaper, hard product, so. But it's not a healthy product. Okay, I might have mixed this with a little too much alcohol to thin it out, so I might blow some of my lines out, so we'll see. All custom colors, y'all. Oh, Michael has to answer because he sees that I Neanderthal don't answer. I'm good at that. I imagine as long as you're not spraying it, automizing it into the air into small particles. Yeah, you wouldn't want to spray this. So this product's a very heavy viscosity though, so it'd be pretty hard to spray this specific product. But I'm like really down with the people that are getting informed with their health. That makes me happy because I spend a lot of time and money on this specific resin. You know, it costs us about $400,000 in just all the R&D. Well, as we kept changing our recipe to try to have a better, harder, um, clearer, stronger cure that was also healthy. And a lot of people didn't seem to care at all about that as a factor. A lot of the contractors didn't either. So, and they'd just be like, we're, we're afraid if it doesn't stink that it's... Ah! Sorry, I'm gonna have tipped over something there. They'd be like afraid that if it didn't stink it wasn't strong because of course the average hillbilly mind tells you... Mm -hmm. Thank you for the love guys. So um, the average person usually assumes if something doesn't smell really bad that it's just not going to be as strong. So contrary to popular belief we took out all the nasty known chemicals and we ended up with a hard clear awesome product and we train this all over the world so come to a class with us thanks for being on the channel and thank you guys for your support please hit that follow button let us know what you'd rather see too how many people we got on today where are we at where are you guys watching from where's our most Where's our furthest reaching person from Colorado? And who's gonna come work with me in London? Do I have anybody that wants to come and work on a really fun project with us in London? Or Italy, we're going to Italy after that, so I'd love to see you in Italy too, guys. Um, Jim said, I have I've been painting cars for 35 years and always wonder or worry about my health. Jim, God bless you, man. I totally think, yeah. None of these companies give a damn. Let me, there's, yeah, there's, I've been in this industry long enough to realize that so many of these companies, it's all 100% about profit when it comes to most manufacturing companies. And that's kind of sad because you're going to, if you have a customer working on, with a material for 30 years, are you going to plan on killing your customer base off? I, mean, I don't know. I wouldn't want to sell something I wouldn't want to work with myself. Say what? Bill fixes showers and baths and his products smell 100%. Bill, you got to get into one of our classes. We actually have a tub epoxy that's amazing. It's, it runs down about 60 to 100 mils thick and really shock resistant. We can do all kinds of very decorative stuff on the surface of a tub, shower, or anything. Illinois, Iowa. Illinois, Iowa. At your desk tonight? Okay. What do we have here? Florida, Colorado, California, Ohio, Mississippi, South Dakota, Kentucky, Tennessee, North Carolina, 
We got a lot of places on here today. It's like a Johnny Cash song. I've been everywhere. Nobody, nobody on here is going to meet me in London, huh? They're all sleeping. Everybody that's going to be in London is, should be in bed or they're be, it's past their bedtime and they're not going to get tea and crumpets in the morning if they're not. If they, oh man, that is really turning out nice. Watch out here, Michael. I pulled the Levi and left epoxy all over the place down here. Super natural, simple table. And of course, we're going to redo this soon too. So, I'm never too in love with anything I do. I'm going to try to get it in. Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry. Uh, we get a little bit of gold, because I think that'll be good on a slate. Don't, be patient with this. Don't try to get all your colors to change all at once, guys. Um, spray little areas, work it, stand back, look at it. Make sure it's going the direction you want your piece to be going in. So. See a lot of people, every single process they do, they're trying to finish the top, but don't worry, you have a lot of working time with this product. We actually, a lot of times in class, we'll pour our first sample at 105 to 110 degrees, and we'll let that product set up, and we pour really successful samples, which has a very, very hot, very cured product. And then the next sample, we'll go ahead and have you mix and spread and pour, and then we don't even come back and finish our pattern until after lunch. And that usually really exemplifies to people and they start realizing just how long you can work with this product especially a really high grade product like this and still get a really nice result and how good it bonds to the edges even though it's really slow like that slow curing and it cures very very scratch resistant so i kind of like this i think i'm gonna have to swipe through this though to get the look i want I don't know. how are you all doing thank you guys for watching today what the hell did I do right there? Looks like I left pigment right there. I hope not. Looks like Levi did a Levi. Kansas. A genuine asshole. I'll go to Italy. A genuine asshole? That's what we need there. God bless you, man. We, the world needs genuine assholes sometimes. I've been known to be one a few times, and I, I pray so much to not be one. But, man, if I'm standing up for kids or something, I don't really give a fuck. Flight. What time's the flight? Hell yeah. I'm packing as we speak. You better pack. <laughs> then come to Italy, and then if you want to come somewhere really fun, we're going to South Africa. So that, the last time I went to South Africa, I got a pet cheetah. I got, dude, okay. I like got hypnotized by the cutest animal I'd ever seen in my life, and I was talking about a damn dog today. But there was hippos, and there were pygmy, little miniature pygmy hippos in South Africa. And then that, one of those had a baby. So there was like a little baby pygmy hippo that was this long running around and I thought about getting arrested by those people because I wanted to just snag it and have a pet so bad. I'm sorry Africa, I was joking, I didn't really, don't hold me out of your country. Um, I was just trying to pop some air bubbles there with the, by the fire on it and really warm it up. Yep, uh, I, I mean usually I would recommend not lighting it on fire like I did. That's probably not the safest thing to do. But it does pop air bubbles, and then this is alcohol mixed with 90, the powder is mixed with 99% isopropyl alcohol. And this is our mica powder. 
Ooh, that's. Thank you, Bill. Jenny? Dude, can't wait to meet you, Jenny. I don't know where. Is that London or? London's in June. Oh, she's probably talking about the Is that London? Or do we have London in June? Because I'm going to be in London in June, Jenny, so I'll see you there. Jenny. Jenny. I'll be your Forrest Gump. What do you do if, say, a bug landed in it? Say what? What do you do if a bug landed in it? If the bug landed in it right now, well, it's soft, I'd be like, bro, get out of my stuff, yo. But if it landed when it was cured, we'd have to cut them out and then patch that little spot, put a little bit of cured epoxy in there, and then we'd come back and sand it. So, well, then I'll see you here in Colorado, Jenny. It's like two weeks away. How long is that? In two weeks. Is that? Do we do the class and then go straight to London? Yeah, then the next week. Okay. Well. Yeah, actually, I'll tell you right now what I did. I poured a base, um, a base color that we mixed, and I made sure I got a really nice even spread of the base color down here. Um, and then I came back over this with a couple mixed colors just for fun. I kind of dumped them all together as dirty pour. And then I blended them. I'm not really, I'm just going for a really fun dirty pour slate. And actually, I'm spraying a lot of alcohol because it's going to force the separation of all these colors. I know it looks like I'm just having a lot of fun, and I really am. It's actually pretty cool. But like down here, you can kind of see as the alcohol dries, I'll blow on it, I'll blow on the whole table, make it all dry. But as it dries, you're going to get some really cool patterning and, and stuff, and you're going to get a really neat like fade. It almost looks like oil on water between the colors you pour. So it, I don't know that it's showing up on the phone, but in person, it's extremely like three-dimensional and it's very contrasting and I just want this to be a very random fun pattern I still want it to look somewhat natural when we're done so that's kind of why I'm sort of trying to be random with my stripes of actual spray here so Oh, well, damn it, Jenny, you missed your, we messed up our schedules. We need to communicate better next time. When you sand one spot, do you have to do the whole lot, like on an island? Um, yeah, if you sand one spot, I usually just try to keep my patch as small as possible when I'm sanding a spot and try to work out. And I'll usually start with my coarsest grip pad, the very smallest, and then as I go out from there, like say I go from 500, I'll get everything profiled with my 500 and then 1,000, I'll go out a little further, and then 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. I'll go all the way up sometimes to like a polishing paste or even a 7,000 grip pad. And often what you'll see is you have the shiniest, nicest part of the countertop right there. But the cool thing is with that is you don't have to run from 500 all the way to 5,000 or 7,000 with all those grits. You can usually, by the time you're up to three or 4,000, 5,000, you can just run a, a nice wet sand is what I'd usually recommend, um, or run a fest tool that keeps it really dry and clean. Um, you'll just burn a lot more pads doing it dry um, and just polish your whole countertop out at 5,000. And your top's gonna look better than it ever looked by itself anyways, so. You know, all my, Jeanette, I go in depth on that. So if you come to a class, you'd have a lot of fun with that. We, we let you actually sand, polish, do all kinds of stuff. So we even polish metal and stuff. So I, I try to go pretty in depth on that. There's been a few classes that I have not covered all everything like that in great detail, but most of them get a pretty hands-on sanding, deglossing section of class. So. Yep, sand it down to, I don't know how thick the resin was or what it was that was poured, but if it's really scratched up, um, go take it and sand it down with like 500 grit, just like we talked about, and just sand everywhere down and just then really clean it in between because you don't want those um, 500 grit sanding swirls from the actual sanding screen in it still. So make sure you actually clean it really well and then step that up to a thousand and then go to, you know, at least go to two, then you can probably go to three and then you can sometimes skip to five. So. You don't have to do quite as many inter intermediate um, applications as you do with like polishing paint, from my understanding. I'm not an expert at that though. Okay. I don't know guys, I think this is turning out pretty nice. 
Say what? Don't burn through it. Yes, they yeah, do not burn through it. I want a really random fun fade. I want to break through some of my base color too. So. Is that what that swirls from? Yeah, probably a bunch of alcohol down with color, which I want some of that. This is going to be the most faded, perfect table you'll ever see. As this, as this all cures, this is going to look really cool. How the colors will blend, as it, but it's going to have to be a patience game with the, the alcohol drying. I'm probably going to do something kind of against my rules here, though, really quick. And see if you guys, hopefully, y'all don't hate me for this. As I preach against it, I do it sometimes. I'm so against spray paints, but for a fun piece of art, we'll see what we can get here. We'll see if we can't get some really fun cells in this. This is gonna dynamically change our whole piece. Do as I say, not as I do. Do as I say, not as I do. Damn it. Somebody caught on to this show. The most clogged, jammed. I'm gonna know this. The spray can's like spitting chunks. I don't even know what's wrong with it. It's definitely probably on its last leg of healthy life. Spraying into clear alcohol purposefully. So, spraying into some clear alcohol. Oh, I stepped in a box here. Oh. My boots. My bootas. Botas. How do you say that? My sapatos. My sapatos. Huh? Sabats. Is that a boot? I mean Are you speaking in German or something over here? We won that war. No, I'm just kidding. I love you, TikTok. Don't ban me or report me. I said to make pedos on a live and I got banned and ever since then I'm scared of everything. Okay, this is getting gorgeous though. If you don't like this. Okay, some of this color is like crazy good now. Hey, you know what? What the hell? I'll pretend that didn't quit working right there. Spraying into alcohol, which is why it's giving it this feathered effect right there. So, I want to blur my ends a little. God bless you, Jeanette. I'm proud of you. 
sunset over water by its gorgeous. Oh, it is giving sunset. I think this is getting good, guys. I don't know. I'm not against this. I'm not against what we're... I'm slipping in what I'm sliding in, or whatever people say. Try to do a more... What do I spray? What do I spray? Oh. Furry blade us. Furry blade? I love furries. So Tracy. Tracy, God bless you. Not sure about, sure about furries, but Levi doing all the things I say not to do. Don't spray spray paint unless it makes things super cool, okay? And then if you're just doing art, like, dude, you do what you love. That's the one rule. If you're there to enjoy yourself, enjoy Furry yourself. Blade said, What's up, everyone? First time here. Furry blade, God bless you. Hey, we're have, glad to have you here, Furry Blade. You're gonna love this channel. It's gonna be your favorite place, and I'm never gonna forget a name like Furry Blade. So I'll remember every time you're on here. All right. I do like that kind of sunset over water. I don't know if y'all do. There we are. And now, I just want to kind of spritz a little bit of trans down through the middle to break that gold so it kind of fractures it. from a sunset color. I hope, I hope this works. Somebody said that and I thought I'd go with it, but God knows how unartistic I am. Do you ever get done watching me, anybody out there, and you're just like, what the hell did I just spend 30 minutes doing? I hope I'm actually a blessing in some way to y'all. day. And I'll spray my I need some trans. That's exactly what I need. Where's my trans? Michael knows what I or I have the color perfect. I should for the spray paint. You are totally right. I should not spray spray paint. We do have a huge recirculation fan in here, but you're co correct, and I should not spray any spray paint in any capacity without a respirator. Stuff like this. This is just fun stuff. If you show up to a class um, and you want to take one home, we just ask that you donate to a few different um, nonprofits, to one of a few different, whichever one you prefer. Um, and then you just take it home and let it be yours. So there we go, this is fun, and this will probably get changed tomorrow or the next day whenever we feel like it or whenever you guys ask for something different. I do think this alcohol has a lot of evaporating to do to make this a natural water line because right here we really have a lot, of, um, a lot of alcohol laid through the center section and different colors in here, and it's gonna look way cooler once this evaporates out and leaves. Actually, because it's evaporating like water does off of waves, it'll leave a really cool wave effect. So I hope that turns out. You know, could you? you know, probably, but man, probably somebody more skilled than me. So I've seen some people do parts on cars and like gas tanks on motorcycles and stuff, and it turned out really pretty. But I mean, I think it was a, a very skilled applicator. So thank you guys so much for joining. I can't wait to see you guys at one of our classes upcoming. Please hit the subscribe button and check out our other channel. Check out our YouTube and go on our website. Call our office if you need anything. If you, if you ever have questions on a remodel or products or, or how to measure things or or just if you should or shouldn't do something, give us a call and we'll, we'll go over it with you. We have awesome people on the phones all the time, and we look forward to talking and working with you guys. And see you soon.
I like that. I'm such a fan of anything blue like that.